Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. Today we're going to talk about catch springs, as that one has been requested quite a bit and was uh, a question that gets asked in a lot of my videos actually, uh, where do I get my catch springs? And until recently, there was no good answer. I collected springs from blasters that I took apart, from mechanical pencils, from a ball tip, retractable pens, uh, anywhere that I could find small springs. I've even used ones that I picked up in parking lots. So. There was no good answer for where I was getting springs. I got some from Home Depot. Uh, I got some from like Staples in uh, um, ballpoint pen replacement packages, all sorts of places. Um, but then my friend Andrew hooked me up with the Fastenal number 155 spring. And this is pretty much the spring I use in all my catch mechanisms now. Uh, it's uh, reasonably strong. Uh, definitely an upgrade to anything that you'll find in a stock Nerf blaster, but not so strong that you're going to end up having trouble releasing. Uh, it comes in uh, fairly long. I mean, it's obviously too long to be a catch spring. Uh, you can generally get three to four catch springs out of one length of this, and they come in a pack of, I think, three for like a buck fifty or something. So um, not an expensive item to get your hands on. And I'll try to put a link to a source in the description if I can find one. Um, but if not, they're Fastenal 155, and you should be able to hunt them down. Uh, as far as tools, you don't need a whole lot of tools to upgrade a catch spring, um, depending on the catch. Now, the 155 is sometimes a smaller inside diameter than your stock spring, and so you're going to need to uh, shave down the catch spring post in order to get it to fit also, because they are obviously too long, you're going to need something to cut the spring with. Uh, but since it's a small gauge spring, you can get away with just simple wire snippers. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, to shave down the post, I have both a triangular file because it creates a nice sharp uh, edge and uh, a, a razor blade. So we're going to take a look at the catch. You have the length of the spring, which gives you a rough idea of how much compression you need to get. So you don't want to put in too much more of this spring or won't be able to catch. And it is, in fact, just a little bit too big. So we can file down the post. You could also cut it using the blade if, if that's the tool that you have available. And now it will fit. And it's definitely not going to come off because it's nice and stout. But it can still compress down around it, which is what we really need. And then we need to get about the same length as the stock spring, which is my general rule for cutting springs is the length of the stock one is generally a good place to start. Um, for this, I'm going to cut it a little bit longer and see if it'll compress enough, and then if not, I will cut it down. That is definitely going to be too long. So we're going to cut it down a little bit, take a couple of coils off. There we go. It has been installed. Uh, if it's not releasing as nicely as you want, you can take off a little bit more. Generally don't take off more than a quarter or a half of a coil at a time. Just step it down until you get the length you want. You can always take off a little bit more. You can't add more on if you cut it too short. So um, this, you get lots of the spring for when you buy a pack, but it's best to not waste materials when possible. So that is how you replace a catch spring and Fastenal 155 is the one that I recommend. So I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching.